So in this episode of Viral Rewind, we're looking at the SK Windows 9X virus. Now because it's Windows 9X based, it's not going to work on a Windows NT system. It's only going to work on Windows 95 and 98 like we're using here. So when you get SK, it'll look something like this. And if you run it, it'll bring up an MS-DOS dialog box of trying to execute operations. And when it does, it causes an invalid page fault in its own program. So obviously, it's kind of an indication that something malicious is going on here. And the camera probably can't pick it up over the fan noise and stuff of the computer, but there was a little bit of hard drive activity that happened too when we ran that. So that usually indicates something that's being written to the disk there. So anyway, what SK does, it hooks into Windows functions and into the memory so that it can run its file infection. The thing about SK though is that, number one, the infection on it is slow. It usually has a thing about waiting one minute before infecting a file, sometimes two, and it only infects executables, .exes, the Windows help files, which is .hlp, and then archive files like .rar and .zip. And the other thing is, is that it will tend to only infect up to about 10 files. And again, because it does it slowly, it tends to take time. But SK does have a destructive payload, and we'll see that in a little bit. One of the things SK does for using its file infection and for also monitoring the actual files, because this is again going to play into the payload, is it hooks into the Windows application functions that allow it to tell what the name of the file is when that file is being accessed and several other things. And the thing about SK is that it looks out for antivirus programs that are running on the system. Namely, they'll look for antivirus software for places like Kaspersky or Dr. Webb's antivirus, maybe even Norton and a couple of the others. And those will also pay into the payload later. So, SK is on the system right now. We can obviously look at files. See one here. So everything on the system is okay at the moment. But notice there's this is explorer.exf file here. Here's our regular explorer.exe next to it. One of the things SK does is it does a little interesting trick because it wants to infect Microsoft Explorer, which is the Windows shell that we're seeing all the windows and desktop and start menu in. And because it's currently active, there's no way for it to infect it. So what would happen is if we were to restart the computer, it would actually put this explorer.exf over explorer.exe during the restart, essentially causing an update as what the trick is trying to do there. And so every time the computer boots, the infected explorer.exe shell would load, and then SK would always be present in memory to run its infection and monitoring routines. Now we're not going to do that because obviously already in memory it would do the same thing if we just restart and brought it up. So let's go ahead and talk about the payload. So payload occurs whenever it's October 26th. So we'll jump ahead to October 26th. And again nothing is going to happen but again right now the thing that the payload is waiting to see on the 26th is if you try to run an antivirus program. So what we'll do is we'll take our trusty calculator program here, make a copy to the desktop, and I'm going to change its name to Dr. Web. .exe. So if we run the normal calculator, everything's fine. However, Dr. Webb is an antivirus program that SK looks out for. And on October 26th, it's going to see that file name and it's going to begin a mass file deletion on the system. So if we run this, that's a little uh, interesting. 
did we cause it to go out of its payload date already? Ah, there it goes. Just had to run it again. So the hard drive is working. Files from Windows is <laughs> the Windows directory is disappearing. Our Office shortcuts are gone. Quick Lot shortcuts are gone. I should probably see icons from the desktop here disappear as well. The system is slowed down because of all the disk activity. I'm trying to bring up the start menu. And the thing about the file deletion payload that SK uses... Oh, see now the system just hung up. That's another thing. See, SK's file deletion payload is pretty dangerous because it doesn't just delete the files on the C drive. It will delete files on all drives that are on the computer, all the way to drive Z. So if you have like a second hard drive like this does with D, or even a third one E, and some network shares, that you have read and write access to, SK is going to try and delete all the files off of those. The other thing is here, as you see, I can't move the mouse or do anything with the keyboard because now the system is hung up. And part of the reason for this is SK puts a call out to the fatal error handler on Windows. And so when it puts a call out to that, it's tells the entire system to stop what it's doing, hang up, and because there's some kind of fatal error has occurred. So because of that, the computer is completely hung up. So this forces you to restart. And, well, what do you think we're going to see when we restart the machine? It says invalid system disk. So Obviously, everything on the system is lost. We would have to reinstall Windows, and if we had any personal files of documents, pictures, music, anything like that, they're gone too. And I thought, I, for the sake of it, adding it in here just to show how much damage SK has done using a boot disk. So here's the drive C that Windows 98 was installed, and as you can see, there are no files on the root directory except to the three folders. So if I go to Windows, if I can spell it right, uh, I with this keyboard. Again, not a whole lot of files. But all we've got is the task monitor, run deal, explorer, and the schedule log, text file along with the swap file. All the rest of these are directories. If you look in the directories, well, the TIFF directory is empty. Let's look in the cursors. Sticky cursors. So this is for all the mouse cursors. That's empty. Let's look in, let's see the Java folder. And Java's pretty much empty. So what it does is pretty much delete all the files out of all folders on the disk and leaves the folders behind. So it's just got a lot of empty folders. Now again I said there was also a second hard drive on here. This usually is used for holding backup data and other things on here. And all the root files, all the files in the root directory of drive D are also gone. If I go into the Windows 98 installation directory on it, all the installation files from Windows 98 are gone off of that. Let's see, if I look in my backup folder... Well, my ghost disk image for restoring the system is no longer on there. So I'm going to have to restore this from an off-site backup. So, that again just shows how destructive SK is.